Welcome to Fun with History with Professor Banks. And today we are leaving the land of Greece and we are entering a mighty empire that starts to rise and this is the eternal city it's called the rise of Rome and that is what we're going to look at today so please come back right after this introduction Welcome to Fun with History with Professor Banks. And today our lesson is on the rise of Rome. So, without further ado, before we get into it, of course, we've got to start lighthearted with our joke of the week. And I do apologize if my voice is a little screechy today. Um, Professor Banks is dealing with uh, late winter cold once again. And uh, it's gotten me a few times this winter, but we can carry on. So today, I'm going to share this joke with you. Last week, there was a joke on a couple, and this is kind of a joke on a couple as well. Um, last week, they were a bit younger, so this, this, is a, uh, this is a good joke if you're a little older. I'm sure you'd get some laughter out of this, or even if you're younger, you might laugh at it too. So this is a, a joke about a couple. Bert feared his wife wasn't hearing as well as she used to, and he thought she might need a hearing aid. Now Bert wasn't quite sure how to approach the issue, so he called the family doctor to discuss the issue. The doctor says to him, there's a simple informer test the husband could perform to give the doctor a better idea about his wife's hearing loss. This is, and the doctor says to the husband, here's what you do. Stand about 40 feet away from her and in a normal conversational speaking tone, see if she hears you. If not, go to 30 feet, then 20 feet, and so on until you get a response. That evening, the wife is in the kitchen cooking, and he walks into the den. He says to himself, Huh, I'm about 40 feet away. Let's see what happens. So, in a normal tone, he asks, Honey, what's for dinner? No response. So, the husband moves closer to the kitchen, about 30 feet away now, and repeats, Peg, what's for dinner? Still, no response. Next, he moves into the dining room where he is about 20 feet from his wife and repeats, Honey, what's for dinner? Again, he gets no response. So, he walks up to the kitchen door now, which is about 10 feet away, and he says, Honey, what's for dinner? Again, there is zero response. So, this time... Bert finally walks right up behind her in the kitchen and he says, Peg, what's for dinner? And she replies back, finally, For goodness sakes, Bert, for the fifth time I told you it's chicken. So, the hearing issue is actually a hearing issue on his, saw, on his end. Or maybe it's both, I don't know. But anyway... I hope you enjoy that little lighthearted joke to get our lesson started today. And our lesson today is also going to actually feature a special guest speaker. He's going to come in and introduce something about five times. So 
So hang on, so hold on for that. But first, what I want to do is talk about the rise of Rome, okay? So, what happens, I want to give you some key dates, and then I'm going to tell you why the Roman Empire rose like it did, and uh, that is what we're going to look at today. So, first of all, before we get going, I definitely want to share with you that I have been in Rome. Um, that was one of the cities that me and my wife went to on our honeymoon when we got married. We went on a European honeymoon and it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. But our last stop is Rome. And I tell you, Rome is quite the city. Quite old, quite ancient, quite... Um, it's just quite a city. Um, there's no words to describe it. And uh, I got a picture here. I just wanted to share this briefly with you. This is a picture right there. Right there on the bottom, you can see it. That's your professor right there standing in the, the Colosseum. So the Colosseum now is, um, a lot of it has been, um, a lot of it's not there anymore, but they have preserved it, preserved it over the years. So it is something you can go into, um, and it's very, very ancient and um as one of my highlights of the trip to see the inside of the Colosseum. So that was me standing there encircled by the Colosseum. So thought you would like that. But what we're gonna do today, I wanna share with you some key dates and then share an acronym with you. How many people here like acronyms? I loved those when I was in school. It's a great way of me to remember things I needed to remember. But today, let's start out with key dates. Okay, so 168 BC was a key date because that is the date that the Roman Republic, it was a republic at that point, it was the starting of their empire, but it was technically still a republic then. It defeats Macedonia, so we know that Macedonia from our lesson last week took over Greece more or less and controlled it, but they defeated them. The Roman Republic in 168 BC and a place called Pydna. And with that defeat, classical Greece is finished. It is no longer. <coughs> and so that ends that era. But Greece becomes, after that, Hellenistic Greece. And so by that I mean, when I talk about Hellenistic I talk about the very foundations of Greece um, get transferred right through to the rest of the ages that will come up, including the Roman Empire. So their foundations become just kind of entwined into the next empire. And that is why these foundations carry on and carry on and carry on until... It got right up to our present. And the foundations I'm talking about are the foundations of philosophy, of math, of drama, of uh, democracy, of athletics, and of medicine. So these things are the things that the Greeks founded and they carried on despite the end of the classical Greece era. So that is a key date. And then... What happens after that, it was just a small little battle. It was just a small little win, just a little tiny win for the Roman Republic as it just does much more major things over its time. So by 202 BC, and let me see if I can find my notes here. Sorry. I had my notes a little hiding behind me. So by 202 BC, um, well actually let's look at 241 BC I should say first. Let's not jump ahead to 202. So 
241 BC. That's another key date. And what happened in 241 BC, you might ask? Well, by 240, by 241 BC, they had had their first war against Carthage. Okay, so they had a war against Carthage. And you probably have no idea what that is or where it is. And so I'm going to show you here on a map. So we're talking about Carthage. We're talking right down here. And you can see it there at the tip of my finger, Carthage. Mediterranean Sea, and up here, so this up here, the top of the map you see is uh, Greece, and then you see down there Italy, um, it's that, it's that area. Carthage is basically Northern Africa, okay? So, Northern Africa is modern day. That's where Carthage is modern day. So, basically, it's modern day Libya and Tunisia that we're talking about. So, Rome had um, fought against Carthage and it had gained some land as a result of that war against Carthage. And the three areas it had gained land was Sardinia, Corsica, and Sicily. And I'm going to show you another map in just a few minutes of the, all the Roman Empire. But that is a key date you have to know. And then the last key date that I would deem that you have to know is by 202 BC. Okay, so this is a thing that just keeps going on and on over time. The Roman Empire just expands and expands and expands to get all these areas so by 202 BC it had acquired Britannia which is back then it was called Britannia it's Britain that's what it is now um, Hispania which is now Spain um, Gaul which is now France and if you want to know the other areas that it had extended its empire by 202 BC, we're talking about the Etruscans, we're talking about the Samnites, we're talking about the Greeks, obviously, that they already did very first thing. We're talking about uh, northern Italy, we're talking about the Carthaginians, which I just referred back to, so the very top of North Africa, and... Um, the Macedons, which they were part of Greece, and Assyrians. So those were all the areas of land that the Roman Empire had under its control by then. Okay. And then um, a last date that I want to leave with you, and the key dates, is 146 BC. Basically, once it took control of Greece, uh, Rome, Rome was very involved in the affairs of Greece after it took over it. So it was involved in its political and government affairs. And in 146 BC, Greece is actually formally designated as a protectorate of Rome. So that's 146 BC. So the Roman Empire started small started with greece and then it got a little bit of island land so that was the first sardinia corsica and sicily are all kind of little small islands off italy and then it just got bigger it got all of italy all britain all france it was a very major powerful force that was erupting in the world at that time and I'm going to show you another map here that shows how great their empire is.
to that there is the Roman Empire. So um, that was basically everything that is in cover there is Roman Empire. So it, it was a pretty big empire and um, it is an amazing empire of force and power. And you can see all the land it controlled. And you can see here on the map, I don't know if you can see right there, to those are what I was talking about earlier, Corsica, Sardinia, Sicily. Those are the little islands off Italy. And you can see Italy over there. Um, go up further. And there's Britain. There is more area controlled by the Roman Empire at the top there. And then you go down here. But anyway, you get the idea. It was a pretty huge empire. So I want to go into five reasons briefly why the Roman Empire grew so strong. And so, and then... That is what I want to talk about today with the rise of Rome. So, we got a very special, special guest here. Okay, to introduce our acronym for the rise of the Roman Empire. And um, he's a little shy, so let's just make sure that we make him feel welcome. We got Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo, how you doing, Scooby-Doo? Thank you for joining us today. No problem, Jason. Glad to be here with you today. Awesome, Scooby. So you do know what you're doing today, right? We're just um, we're talking about the rise of the Roman Empire, Scooby. And so um, what I want to do is give our folks out there an acronym for five reasons why they became a strong empire. So I thought I would I thought since you're such a fun dog that you would love to introduce each letter to us as we go over it. Is that a, is that what you're do you understand that Scooby? Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, Professor Banks. Okay, wow, so there's our special guest, Scooby. And so what I want to do is look at five reasons why the Roman Empire became a strong empire. Okay, so let's look at the first one together. And bear with me for a second here. So my acronym is on the bottom here, Roman. So, very, very good acronym. It's easy to remember. And so, let's start out with the first letter. The first letter there, Scooby. Please give us what that stands for, the first letter in Roman. Okay, Professor Banks. Stands for Roman Religious Policy. Thank you, Scooby. Thank you. And as Scooby said, yes, it's Roman religious policy, one reason why the Roman Empire grows to be so powerful and big. And so basically what that means is they were into God's big time Rome. Multiple gods, not just one god, they were into many, many gods. And so um, their philosophy of their policy was basically the more they conquered, so the more countries and land that the Roman Empire conquered, the more gods were incorporated into Rome itself. So basically, um, it Romanized the empire, so to speak. Um, and you know, um, when you have a when you when you have a society that incorporates lots of gods into their empire. It generally means um, they're very serious about what they're doing and they um, it aids them in extending their empire. Um, so Roman religious policy would be the first reason why it grew so strong. 
Okay, so let's look at the second one together. The second one of the rise of the Roman Empire is O, okay, and the letter Roman. So, O, Scooby, you're over there. So, Scooby, what does O stand for in our acronym today? Awesome. Okay. It actually stands for Openness of Society. Awesome. Thank you for thank you for your help, Scooby. I really appreciate it. So, openness of society. Openness of society. So what what I mean by that is um, number one, you could go from a slave to a pa patrician just like that. Okay, so you could go from being down at the very bottom of society to getting up pretty high just like that. Where in Greece, that would not happen. You could not see that. You, that would not happen, and you did not see that happen. But in Rome, you did. And basically, patricians were wealthy people. Plebeians were low class, and slaves were the bottom of the rank. So imagine, you go just from a slave to the most highest rank of society, just like that. And there was a big thing in the Roman, Roman Empire, too, called a senate. So it represented people for the people. So um, that Senate really aided in terms of the openness of society. And another factor to the openness of society is the fact of Roman citizenship. So by that I mean as the Roman Empire conquered more lands and obviously more people, um, they... They eased them into their society without too many issues. And actually, the people they conquered could actually practice their own self-government and religion to a certain degree. As long as they did not revolt against the actual Roman Empire. So, you became a citizen of Rome, just like that with open arms, and you could go from the lower class right up to the higher class very easily. So that was a, that was big for the Roman Empire to grow. Okay, let's move on. We're in the middle of the Roman word now. So we're at an M. M. Scooby, tell us what M stands for. Okay, Jason. M stands for military. Thank you, Scooby. Military. And I think that's one of the most, that's actually the biggest force of why the Roman Empire extended the way it did because of its army. And the Roman army was, was, just out of this world. There was nothing that really even compared to it at all. It was incredibly disciplined, virtually unbeaten, had a legion of one, a legion of 10,000 men in it. At the heart of the Roman army was a centurion in charge of 100 men. And today, the centurion would be, in modern day terms, that would be a sergeant minor. So, and obviously the army was incredibly disciplined and at times very ruthless too. Um, obviously, we know about some of we know about how they handled some criminals back then in the Roman time. It was inhumane. It was cruel, and of course. The biggest thing that came out of the Roman era was death by crucifixion. So the Roman army was very disciplined and very focused on their tasks. And they didn't take punishment lightly. 
So that was a huge for huge reason why the empire grew to be so big. Okay, let's move on to number four, shall we? A in Roman. Okay, so we're at A and Scooby. Please do us the honors. What does A stand for? Professor Banks, A stands for area. Thank you, Scooby. No problem. So, area. And by area, I mean basically it's geography, okay? So, I showed you a couple maps already, but what I mean by what I really am getting at with geography is where it was located, Rome, it was a great location, okay? So we all know where Rome is on the map, more or less where Italy is. So where it was was great for agriculture. It was in the middle of the sea, basically. So you had um, a sea to go to to get your resources. And, you know, um, obviously a lot of fish in the sea. So fishing was a huge part of that sea link that there was there with Rome. And essentially, because of where it was located, it, it, it made it a very favorable and great location for administrating the Roman Empire. Because when you're, when you're right there, right on that tip of the Italian Palencia with the Mediterranean Sea by you, you had the sea to go to. You could just hop. You could just t get a boat, hop into the sea, and go over to Africa where they had conquered some land and um, get more resources. Or uh, you could go up the sea a bit and get to other areas too. So <clears throat> it was really a great central location for administrating uh, their government and uh, their empire. And you hear a real estate agent tell you, location, location, location. So much a key for real estate. And that was for the Roman Empire too. Okay. So finally, we're going to get into our last one here. And our last one in the Roman word N. N. And Scooby, my friend, please tell me what that stands for. Okay, Jason. N stands for neatness. Neatness. Okay? Neatness. And by that, I mean, it was the only way I could kind of come up with an acronym for this. But by neatness, I'm talking about its organization system. Rome, the Roman Empire, was extremely efficiently organized. And... It had effective leadership, and it had effective civility, and at the heart of its organization was a very strong system of law and order, and it was effective, and it was very, very well put together. It was run like a well-oiled machine. So, and I guess... You know, you can kind of, that that is one reason why we talked about the deaths earlier. Like, they had a very, very effective law and order system. They had their laws, they administered the laws, and the order for breaking laws was extremely precise and effective. So the Roman Empire grew big. It became very strong, and it got so huge, and it, it ruled the world for uh, uh, quite a bit of time. Not as long as the Persian Empire did, but it did hold its place for some time. And actually, before... I, I get in any further thing. Let's thank our friend Scooby for coming on and being a guest speaker with us today. Scooby, thank you for being on Fun With History with Professor Banks. And I appreciate your input to uh, that lesson. 
You're welcome, Jason. It was great to be on your show. Please have me again. Well, we may, Scooby. We may. Okay, so those are five reasons why the Roman Empire became strong. I talked about the key dates and times where um, the Romans acquired land and territory. And really, this was the last major empire at the beginning of human civilization. So it essentially um, rose up to be the last major empire. And after the Romans, we're, we're going to see some difficulties. But that is for future lessons. But what I want to leave with you today is those five things. And um, very also another very important aspect is the Hellenistic part of Greece that carries on in future societies and future eras because that is very key too. So that is the rise of the Roman Empire in a nutshell. Now next week what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at one of the greatest men of the Roman era. He was strong, mighty, and he was a very big key why the empire extended even further and remains such a power. And that man is Julius Caesar. We're going to look at him next week in our history lesson. So, this has been fun with history with Professor Banks. And again, I apologize for my voice today. I hope I do get better soon. Um, but next week, we're looking at Julius Caesar. And please leave comments below my video. Let me know what you think of these videos. I hope they're helpful. And even for any of you out there who need to learn a little bit more for a project in school or something like that, I hope it's helpful as well. So this has been Fun With History with Professor Banks. Next week is Julius Caesar. So from Professor Banks and our special guest Scooby-Doo, we bid you adieu. And until next time, take care.